Today we are going to be talking about the one-handed frost staff here in Albion Online. What I'm going to do throughout this video is I'm going to show you guys all the abilities on the one-handed frost. I'm going to show you some different types of combination of builds that you can do as well as the Avalonian dungeon DPS build. I do want to have a disclaimer though that when it comes to builds for essentially any weapon here in Albion Online, a lot of it is open for interpretation and to add different types of boots, chest pieces, and helmets. So I would never want Want to make it seem like this is the only type of builds that you should be running with frost as there is many different ways that you can set up your build with leather and cloth and maybe even plate to make different types of builds here that could work better than the ones i'm going to be showing you i'm going to be showcasing the builds that i used when i was pvping in the mist and in the roads and open world roaming and the builds that worked for me as well as get you started in the right direction so that you can work towards getting better with the one-handed frost so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the main build that i've been using while running one-handed frost so I usually do a mage cow and then I have force field. So this is to create distance between my opponents. I have a mage robe and I use frost shield. So any type of dots from like a curse staff, maybe even an ax, anyone that hits me while I have this frost shield up, it makes them slow by 20%. So this is something that again, helps me create distance as well as reflect some damage back at them. If they are going to be nuking me with a lot of damage, let's say like a bolt caster or someone uses their burst on me, I can proc the frost shield, get some damage resistance as well as reflect 15% of the damage back. And then most of the time you'll see me running soldier boots just so i can have rejuvenating sprint i love the heal that it gives and it helps make any build a little bit more sustained and get some health back so this one has always been really nice to me and i've actually been running the fort sterling cape and this cape has saved me from grail seekers it has saved me from daggers because their shadow edge will hit me fort sterling cape will proc it saved me from claws it saved me from double bladed staff one shot builds with demon capes the fort sterling proc on that first grab that they want to get on you this cape has saved me more times than I can count and I highly recommend running this if you're running any type of mist content open world Fort Sterling Cape you just can't go wrong with if you don't know what it does it activates when you get stunned silence or rooted and what it does is it become you become untouchable and it cleanses all crowd control effects and debuffs except damage over time effects any type of catch or people that are ganking or someone that has again a one-shot build that has to lock you down this will save your life and a lot of times their build that's all they need is to lock you down that one time to get the the kill on you and this cape will save you so that's why i highly recommend running this cape there is also another cape uh, limhurst cape that you could run if you are having mana issues but again fourth sterling cape is always going to be the safest option with this build because you are going to be running one-handed frost to output the most damage you are going to be cloth cloth chest piece so you want to create distance and you don't want to be as committed to the fight in melee range so this is one of the things that'll help you get out of that offhand we have mist caller just have better cooldowns never can go wrong with that we do have omelet which increases your cast speed and cooldown rate so cooldown rate is always good and cast speed is good for or two of the abilities on the frost staff Q. I have been using invis pots. You can use healing pots, but invisibility pot has been absolutely amazing if you're running one handed frost in a mist environment. Because if you're in the middle of a fight with someone and you end up getting third partied, or you are in a pretty bad predicament, if you can create a little bit of distance and drink the invis pot and juke them out a different way, this again has saved me probably more times than the Fort Sterling Cape. Invisibility pot has saved so many builds for me. I almost can't get over running it when it comes to miss content like sometimes i'll run healing pots and the healing pot ends up getting me killed because invisibility pot would have helped me juke them out and create more distance to save me but i am also running like 6.1 7 tier 7 and tier 8 builds i know invisibility pot can be a little bit more expensive so if you do want to tone down your build you can do that and just run like healing pot or resistance pot any of those type of things that you want to run if you want to test them out all right now to go over the one-handed frost portion of this video so we have the master frost staff is the one that i'm using i have been using furious which after every five spell cast increases your damage dealt the aggressive caster is another good one that you can be used if you're using like a q2 build which i'll be showing here in a second and then energetic you're not going to want and then frost you're not going to want just because these builds with the frost staff frost staff is not an auto attack heavy weapon it's more ability based so these two right here are just essentially void you're not going to want to be using these it's these two right here you're going to be juggling between depending on the type of build or situation that you're in all right to go down the queue list we have frostbite which is a project Projectile that shoots in the targeted direction. So all we do is aim it and shoot. And there is another way to cast this as well. And I want to, I'm going to talk about this once we go over Q2 right now. So the next one is going to be Ice Shard. So let me just mount up real quick while I switch these out. Ice Shard is a AOE that you cast, and it essentially it lands wherever you're putting it. There's this circle and this Q. 
And this is going to be the other one that has a scholar robe build. So I know I'm using mage robe here, but if we put scholar robe on and put speed caster, and then we're going to do aggression. The thing with this build is it is a nuking build. So it absolutely destroys people if they're not ready for it. The only thing that is the problem with it is you have to stand still while speed casting like this. So if I proc my speed caster and then I can just keep casting cues over and over again, and you can just start absolutely nuking people. And with this build, you could use the fourth passive or you could use the third passive because the third passive after every four spell cast reduces your cast time by 40% for three seconds. So that would increase it even more. So that is another one. You can also do a Morgana cape on it just to get that extra. Once you cast the E, your Morgana cape can go off and you can start spamming Qs again. And then another small detail that a lot of people use is if you go into your settings and go to controls, a lot of people who do the Q2 build or play Frost in general, they like to do quick cast on button press. So what this will do is instead of it doing that circle around me, now everywhere that I click Q where my mouse is, it's just going to automatically cast it. So if I do this and then I just start casting Q, I can just keep pressing Q over and over again in this one spot. And I can spam them easily that way. Uh, you can't see where the AoE is going to hit. You just know that it's going to be in the middle of where your mouse is. So some people like it, some people don't. I usually just keep it on normal spell cast because I do use a lot of different weapons. But cast on button press is a good one to use if you are going to be doing that Q2 build. And it'll also be better for your hands just so you know you don't have to uh, press Q and then click every single time. You can just press Q wherever your mouse is. So the other ones that we're going to be is Frozen Surge. And this one is, it, it's been underrated, but I think it's coming back a little bit. Uh, it does a freezing ground along a 16 meter line in front of you. So it just casts like this. And what it does is it slows all enemies by 20% for 4.74 seconds, as well as it does 318 magical damage. And this one is really nice for kiting people out. So I've used this a lot against like curse staffs. Uh, I use it against almost every melee build that I fight. If I let, fight any kind of type of swords, battle axes, uh, daggers, I use this to keep them at a distance. So this is really nice. As well as if you are chasing, this is another one that's good because if you can get a hit on them, you're essentially going to stay stuck to them because they're going to be 20% slowed for the rest of their life as long as you keep stacking it on them. These next abilities, there is a bunch of different abilities you can use on here and a lot of them, if not most of them, apply just to PvE. The one for open world that you're going to be using is going to be Frost Nova. Frost Nova is absolutely the play for any type of PvP content because of the utility that it brings to the fight and it has an invincibility frame or an iframe which grants immunity to damage for 0.2 seconds. If you can get the timing down of this iframe, your skill ceiling on this weapon will increase exponentially. You can do so much with this weapon. Uh, we have Frost Bomb, which slows all enemies by 20% and does damage in a radius. We have Frost Beam, which you will stand and cast this. So again, these two are better for PvE. We have Frost Lance, which is essentially a pierce. And by pierce, I mean it decreases damage resistance of the enemies that it hits. Again, that's a, more of a PvE, if not used that often. And then we have Obelisk, which is, we're going to talk about this one for the Avalonian Dungeons. This one's really good and a bigger group environment because it does help the damage and cooldown rates of all your allies but to go over frost nova real quick what it does is it teleports to a targeted position you can't teleport through obstacles though you can't teleport over rocks or through boxes or whatever releasing a frost nova with a three meter radius around the starting position and it stuns all enemies hit for 1.58 seconds it deals 247 damage so if you are on top of someone and teleport and they are in that three meter radius they are going to get frozen and stunned for 1.58 seconds and then it's going to proc that damage as well as you do have the 0.2 seconds immunity to damage which is that iframe i was talking about so what's nice about this iframe is it can be used to dodge battle axe throws you can dodge the death curse from the one-handed curse staff it is a very small window but it can be done there's a lot of different things you can do with it it's going to be a very small window again and if you have high ping here in albion like you know 150 plus it's going to be even more rough playing frost staff in general so this is in general more of a low ping weapon when you have higher ping you are kind of fighting against the current with a lot of the ability that this has if not just q1 and the frost nova timing is going to be not working in your favor if you have higher ping you could probably do frozen surge builds but it's going to be harder but it's, it's still playable and then we have the e the freezing wind so it blows freezing wind in a cone in front of you dealing 615 magical damage gradually frozen over 0.8 seconds it first slows them and then it ends in a root for 3.95 seconds this one is great for disengaging as well as locking down opponents so that's what's nice about the frost one-handed frost build in general is it has a lot of slows and a lot of control over the fight you can slow opponents that are trying to run away you can slow opponents down that are trying to get to you you have a lot of control and once you get this weapon down i think you'll have a really good time with it if you 
do like the slowing and kiting play style that this weapon does bring. So I'm going to switch back to this. And then again, like the frost shield, the force field, force field is used to, let's say I am, you know, I'm freezing someone and slowing. They close the distance. I end up rooting in there. They have another ability that closes the distance again. I can use force field to enemies within a six meter radius around you by nine meters. So it'll knock them back nine meters. Again, it's to create more distance. And another thing that's nice about this build and why I like running soldier boots. A lot of times royal sandals is the better play because they're unpurgeable. But with this build, you do have the options to create lots of distance. Like with the frost nova, with the E, you could root someone, frost nova, you could bop them, you could E and then you could frost nova teleport and then you could proc your run and they i believe the fiend cow has a nine meter radius for the purge so if we go to that uh yeah purge is all buffs on target enemy range is nine meters that's one that you can avoid and then just again lots of slows that it has and stuff so we're gonna go over to i have a box set up with a bunch of different builds that i can be showing you here so the two different builds that we're really working with is going to be the Q1 and the Q3. These are the two that I usually switch between. If you are doing a Q2 build, you are more committed to it because you're going to have to bring a Scholar Robe or a Morgana Cape. But overall, like this build can switch between these two with ease. There is a way to make this Frostbite better because you can decrease the cast time even more using Omelette and a Tome. But overall, you can switch between them using this build and it can work out pretty well. So this is the box of all the things that I have to show the different stuff that you can use for your frost staff builds so we have mage cow with the force field uh hunter hood right now is in like it's completely in an amazing position right now with the 100 reflect that it has i've been using it a lot more with some of my builds beginning a lot of good kills with it a lot of people who have builds that burst and put out a crap ton of dps this retaliate can essentially kill them for you it's actually insane right now so if you aren't trying out the hunter hood i highly recommend it if you can get the timing down and use it to save yourself it is an amazing hood that to use and then there's cleric cow you could use ice block to negate some type of burst damage maybe like a one-handed curse e the thing is with this one is cleric cow can work it's just this locks you down in position so you are committed to the fight still because even though you are negating some type of damage they're still going to be on top of you if they want to be or they'll create distance if they want you can cancel it but that's kind of the idea around it is you are a little bit more committed but cleric cow with the ice block is always good to negate lots of damage that might be coming your way as well as you can use it to once you proc it you can wait for some cooldowns Let's say you're waiting for your Frost Nova teleport and you have like you know, five seconds left on it or something. You could Ice Block because Ice Block, you know, you're immune to damage while channeling for up to 4.75 seconds. As soon as you pop out, you have your Frost Nova ready. You can get out, use your E to slow, all that different types of stuff. Uh, the two pots, we talked about those. We have Invis and Healing Pots. We have Mage Robe. Cultist Robe is another one that I've been seeing. Uh, mostly with the Chill Howl though. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of Chill Howl builds running Cultist Robe because a lot of times they'll create that distance and heal. You could do the same with the One-Handed Frost. You could use the cultist rope to get that damage resistance as well as the heal over time and then we you can never go wrong with cleric robe just because of the, the defensive that it brings to the fight you know there's nothing wrong with this uh, you're going to get more damage out of the mage robe and the cultist robe but cleric robe everlasting spirit it's it's always been good and it's still good for a lot of the caster builds as for the boots we talked about it we have royal sandals royal sandals are unpurgeable because they are a toggle ability so they could be turned on and off and abilities like that can't be purged and then we have the soldier boots with rejuvenating sprint you could use wanderlust in some different situations if they do have a build that's going to be chasing you down there's different situations to use wanderlust most of the time i don't use it just because it's very easy to purge and the startup time for it you're really slow starting up until it finally gets to full speed rejuvenating sprint is usually the play uh, we have the two types of food that you can run here so omelet gives you cast speed and cooldown rate if you're not using q1 if you're not going to be using frostbite if you're going to be doing let's say a frozen surge E build, I highly recommend running Eel Stew because if you are running that, you don't need cast speed. Your cast is instant on press. Cast speed helps you for abilities that have a cast time. So this one has a cast time of 0.3 seconds. This one has a cast time of zero seconds. So Omelet is only working half for you. So you get a cooldown rate of 13.5 seconds. You do only get a cooldown rate of 6.7 seconds here, but you get increased damage. So I think the trade-off 
is pretty good because you get a cooldown rate and a damage increase. So this is a good one that you could use. And then we have, if we go down, we have the Fort Sterling Cape and the Limhurst Cape. We talked about this if you're having mana issues. Again, I still stand by Fort Sterling Cape with this build. It's really good on saving yourself from a lot of the one-shot builds out there. Okay, the next one we have is the Chill House. The Chill House is another one of the Frost Staffs that people have been using. And the only difference is the E. So it creates a freezing field in a six meter radius around the target, lasting three seconds. It slows all enemies by 30% and it ignores crowd control resistance. If you target an ally or yourself, the target and the crystal immediately will freeze for two seconds. If I target an enemy with it, the target in a crystal after 1.1 seconds for two seconds, if it hasn't left the field. So in 1.1 seconds, if they're still standing in that radius, they will be frozen. Frozen targets are stunned, they're immune to damage, and they can't be healed. After the freeze ends, the crystal explodes, dealing 765 damage to all enemies within a two meter radius. So you have to target someone with this. You can't just cast it somewhere. If we were to cast it on ourselves, this is how it would look. So we would cast it, and then we'd be immune to damage while doing that. You can save yourself from stuff while using this, and you can also cast it on people and help create distance because they will be frozen, as well as it will proc that damage. So it is something to keep in mind. And then we have the offhands. Mistcaller is always going to be just completely the best offhand for Frost. It's just so good with the cooldown reduction to help you get more abilities out. We have the Tome of Spells. So the thing with the Tome of Spells is it has a cast time modifier, so it's really strong. When using Q1, you get a lot of cast speed out of it and can get these out faster. But there is something that you need to worry about, and that is energy. You need to watch your energy while in the fights because if you are casting this a lot more, it's going to eat through your energy. And then we have Lyrian Cane. Lyrian Cane is kind of like a secondary side one that I've been trying out. It has a cooldown modifier as well as has CC duration versus players. So I have done some builds with Lyrian Cane, Frozen Surge, and Frost Nova. It's kind of like this setup. And then we have Lyrian Cane to increase the CC of the E and the Q. And it's worked out pretty well. Uh, most people can't catch me. You can stay away from people pretty well using Lyrian Cane, as well as you can catch some people. But Mist Caller is always going to be stronger just because it has more cooldown modifier than the Lyrian Cane has. It just has a lot of CC versus players. Lyrian Cane would probably be better in like a small group environment if you're trying to slow or keep people on top of your team so that they can't get away. Lyrian Cane is probably more of the play. And then that is going to be it for these builds. These are kind of your open world mist road pvp builds uh, overall again open for interpretation there's a lot of different ways that you can do these builds so don't think that this is the only way that you can play one-handed frost but this is just some of the stuff that i've tried out and i've managed to get a lot of pvp kills with and it worked out pretty well for me the next one we're going to be talking about and this is just kind of a bonus is going to be avalonian dungeons and if you don't know what avalonian dungeons are they're essentially the raid content in this game they can have a max of 20 players there is a dps build that you can run for avalonian dungeons and that is the one that i'm wearing currently I I just put it on we're gonna put this back in here so if you are looking to run some avalonian dungeon content with your guild and they want you to run dps maybe they said frost staff this is the build that they're going to be talking about and the play with this build is it's meant to be a max dps get as much dps out as you can you have full aggression on everything as well as you have defenseless rush and it plays around the druid robe so the combo here is we're going to proc obsessive burst and what happens is you get a burst of power whenever you cast a spell within the next 10 seconds it increases your damage in your healing cast by six percent and it stacks up to six times so the thing with this is we're going to proc that we would be using the perpetual energy which makes reducing your energy cost to zero for 15 seconds so this is the part where you can spam your cues it is a q2 build but this one goes off of your morgana cape so morgana cape when it activates by using your e which is your third slot ability it blesses you with the mark of the raven reducing your cast time increasing your attack speed by 50 percent for eight seconds so this is the play where you would spam your cues as well as you're going to be using aggressive caster so every four spell cast reduces your cast time by 40 percent as well as you will be using obelisk which increases all damage and cooldown rate for 10 allies within a six meter radius this is the play to help increase the whole damage of your party so you're essentially a support as well as a hard dps build and just to kind of show you the combo so we would do our r and then we would proc this ability we proc this ability and then we could eat we can either obelisk or you know as soon as we have defenseless rush activated we this ability can last up to seven seconds we kind of want to get our cues rolling because i did some extra damage as well that we'll stack with this and as soon as we hit our e anyway since we start spamming cues we're going to get our full obsessive burst anyways so you could cast the obelisk we could that and then we have our boots and then we well we have to e and then we just start queuing out of our minds so now we have our morgana cape active and we just start spamming cues and that's where the damage would come from. 
And over time, at first, you're, it's going to be... You're going to have to work on getting the combo down. But it's all it's going to be R. And then you're going to do Perpetual Energy, Boots. And then if you want to... You can put your Obelisk down first before doing the combo. But then we burst, burst, burst. We press E. And then we just start spamming Qs. Because the E is what's going to activate the Morgana Cape. Morgana Cape is going to go into cooldown, though. So it does have... This one has a cooldown rate of 1 minute and 24 seconds. So we're... At some parts of the fight, we're just going to be slow queuing. And that's where our aggressive caster comes in, so it does help our cast time some more. And then we're going to wait for the... We wait for the cape to come back, and then we can do the full combo again. That's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned some things about the one-handed frost and some of the different builds that you can use going into an open-world environment, and that I'm excited to see some of you guys try it out, and hopefully you enjoy using this weapon. I try to play with it and do a lot of PvP interactions as much as possible with the frost staff before making this video, so I hope you know I was able to bring some knowledge to you as well as keep it open again for interpretation. There's a lot of different things. This is not set in stone. Albion Online is a very diverse and evolving game. There's a lot of different builds you can use and I just want to keep constantly expressing that and making that known that this is not the only way that you can play this weapon, but it is a way to open the door for you for something that is working and help you gain that knowledge that you need to then progress your ability with the Frost Staff in the future with different builds and whatnot. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next video, and I'll see all of you in Albion Online.